Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Medium Kim. Thank you for joining me on this little video about transitions and does morphine hasten death in hospice patients. So thank you for joining. Um, remember to like, share, subscribe this video if it, if it helps you. All right. Okay. So I do want to just, before we go into the morphine aspects, I want to talk a little bit, just say, hey, happy uh, Super Bowl tomorrow. And uh, I, this reminds me, as before I started recording, about a patient I had in hospice about two years ago that died on Super Bowl Sunday. And it was so interesting because the day before, I saw him on a Saturday. He died on a Sunday. On Saturday, we didn't think he was going to make it overnight. He was breathing about seven times a minute, maybe. And I mean, barely breathing. It was so shallow. Um, and I don't know. We They were just like, why is he still here? Why is he still here? And the fans said, well, he loves Super Bowl. And we thought, okay, he's waiting for the game. And when I tuned into the spirit world, I could see the party was... There was a happening party on the other side, too, waiting for him. His mom and dad, they were dressed in their formal attire, uh, like a long, she would, the mom was wearing like a long white dress like you'd wear to a wedding. <laughs> and then he was wearing a, a black suit, Her, his dad. And this is what I often see when somebody is getting ready to transition within about that 24 hours, they've changed, the spirit world people have changed their clothes into formal attire and really it's lovely and i and again in about two or three weeks ago i saw this with a patient also changing his clothes to a white tuxedo after he took his last breath so that's so interesting how we get dressed up for the party uh and anyway he did have a lovely party um but the next day so when i arrived the next day which was during the game um and I was surprised he was still there. I did a little chakra clearing on him first over the heart. And then as soon as I did that, and this is, again, this is during the game. I could still see the party on the other side. Um, and, and, I, and I told the family, it was his wife and daughter there. And I said, okay, let's just step back. After the chakra clearing, I said, okay, this gives him time to go. We chakra cleared, step back, and he did. He took his last breath. Now, I think, one, he waited for the game. Two, he also didn't want his girls to be alone without a nurse there when he took his last breath. So he did it all. He was a doctor as well. And I think, you know, he just really wanted to take care of his girls. So I thought that that was amazing. And, and then after he crossed, I, he was at the party. I could see him eating even watermelon and different things. I could, I could see he was uh, enjoying himself. And, and then of course, uh, Later on, I, I mean, a few months later, tuning in to him again, he was just so much um, love and gratitude for his family and, and for being there for him. So that's beautiful. Uh, also, you know what? We've got new moon last night. So time to make your new um, wishes, I guess. Your new, your put your new things in place that you wish. And I'm, I'm thinking about that for myself even. I, I forget, I remind you guys, I forget to do it myself because it takes a little effort maybe to write it down. Um, and then also it's Valentine's Day next week. Here's my little my little heart. I wear this every Valentine's. I <laughs> uh, made this a long time ago, made out of felt. It's a little doll inside a, a heart um, on this kind of cord. Anyway, adorable. And I, oh, I wore this today at a psychic fair and everybody commented on it. So, <laughs> okay. So now let's get to the morphine. Because I hear that what I hear from families is one, I don't want my family member to go into hospice because I don't want to, them to take morphine. And, and I've heard morphine kills uh, kills you, um, whether you're on hospice or not. I hear I hear it. It makes you die. I, 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 I you know, those tell me I a friend of mine said when they started giving morphine, my their grandmother died. All right. And also. Um, if my family's, if I, if I'm allergic to morphine, can I, why do I have to take morphine? Isn't there anything else? So I want to explain some of that. And does it cause you to die quicker? All right. So there's been a lot of studies on this. Does it cause you to die quicker? No, there's a lot of, actually a lot of studies that actually may make you live a little longer because when you feel more comfortable, then you are wanting to eat and you'll feel better and you have more quality to your days. 
Um, and it does not cause you to become an addict. If you were an addict, um, you would already know it by the time you're dying. Now, if somebody is an addict, um, they still need pain medicine. And they may need more pain medicine because they have a higher tolerance usually, whether whatever the addiction was. I'm talking about an addict for either alcohol or drugs. Okay. So they all, they may, may need more. It may need to be monitored more closely, or maybe if there's somebody in the family who's an addict, you may have to lock up the medicines and things like that. But people, you still need to be comfortable. All right. Now, morphine and any opioid, and that includes oxycodone, dilaudid, methadone, uh, tramadol. No, that, that's not, I wouldn't call, that's not really a high... That's not much of an opioid. It's, a, it's just a little better than a Tylenol. Vicodin doesn't do much either. But anyway, um, these work in, for two things. The opioids help with pain. The, now, um, morphine, oxycodone, and Dilaudid are very good for soft tissue pain. Methadone is good for soft tissue, nerve pain, and bone pain. So methadone is really superior if you can find a doctor that will um, prescribe it, because not all doctors are comfortable with methadone, but they use you can use opioids for pain medicine, but also for breathing, because the, the breathing um, opens the arteries in the whole body, opens the uh, in the heart, the lungs, and then the, all the way head to toe, all the arteries open so that each breath is more efficient. It's not to suppress breathing. It opens the arteries so that you don't have to breathe so hard. You don't have to struggle for air so much. So it's really good for air hunger. It actually is even better than plain oxygen, you know, in the nose. It's better. Um, I've seen many, many people that have been blue fingertips. They put you take some oxycodone or morphine, and then within 30 minutes, 45 minutes, they're not blue anymore. They, they're breathing better. So it's very good for that. And it is a common thing as people are dying, um, one, to have pain, and two, to be short, short of breath. Now, pain comes from, it could be from your diagnosis, like cancer pain um, with tumor size increasing or, or cancer spreading. It's just going to cause pain. It could also be from just being in bed. You know, if you can imagine sitting in an airplane for you know, days, and you can't get up, you're going to be in pain. It's kind of painful. So just being in bed is kind of painful. Um, even though you're being moved around and repositioning, it can still be painful. Um, so, you know, morphine is for that as well as the breathing. Um, now, you know, between morphine and oxycodone, there's reasons, uh, you know, you have to ask your healthcare team uh, which one is better for you? Because it depends on whether you have any liver or kidney issues, um, then they'll pick one or the other. Um, oxycodone is actually stronger than morphine, um, even though what we hear about is morphine because it's, it comes in liquid and it's easy because you can do you know small amounts, um, six drops. Usually it's a 20 milligram per mil and six drops in that 0.25 ml um, is a small amount. Now, uh, oxycodone used to come in liquid, not anymore. Or maybe if it does, it's extraordinarily high expensive. I think it's 300. It, you, I don't know when they stopped making it or a long time ago, um, a, year, a few years ago, it was like $300 a small little bottle. So I, that's not, you know, we don't, I don't even know if it's made anymore. Um, okay. And again, methadone, I love methadone because it's long lasting. You don't have to take a lot of it, um, but you have to find the doctor to prescribe it. Uh, it would be a hospice doctor. There is a difference between long-term pain management and um, short-term uh, um, pain management. So, um, you know, it's, it's a little different in hospice because we are talking usually about that end-of-life um, chronic well, I know it's more acute in a certain way. It's more acute um, end of life pain and shortness of breath. Okay, so let me see. We talked about addicts. We talked about um, 
the reason you take morphine? Um, and does it cause you to die faster? Because the misconception is, I hear this, well, my friend's grandmother, when they started morphine, she died. Now, you have to remember, she probably was already dying, and then they used morphine to help with the breathing or the pain. It's not to cause somebody to die faster. Hospice philosophy is not to hasten or to prolong, not to hasten death or to prolong life. It does neither. It's just the, the, the purpose is to bring more comfort, more quality to your days, not more days, okay? To more, more comfort, so more quality to whatever days you have left. That is what the goal of hospice is. And um, so it's, you know, I, I just have to say, I have so many patients who were short of breath, but they were afraid to use morphine because it has a bad rap, especially from World War II, when a lot of the war veterans um, became addicted to morphine. So people still remember that. And so they don't want to take it. But when they actually finally do take it, they're like, why didn't I take it before? Because it really helped their breathing. I see it doesn't matter what kind of lung, lung disease. Usually it does help with, um, with the breathing. So in other words, you don't have to wait to your last few days to take morphine. You can take it early on in your, in the hospice, um, uh, program because it does help with the breathing. Um, you know, very good for emphysema or COPD or, end-stage heart disease. All right. So now I know I'm getting a little technical, but remember, ask your providers what would be best for you. Um, but it does not hasten death. Okay. Because we use a small amount um, and usually we titrate small and then go up as needed. Um and also morphine is a short acting medicine. So even if you, it's like, if you, uh, you have to, you know, you just have to see, cause it will only last, stay in the system for two to four hours, the short acting medicine. Okay. The immediate release. All right. I don't know if I, if there's anything else I can think of right now, I just want you to know it's not to hasten death. That's, that's really the bottom line here. And to, it is to make you more comfortable. And if you have an allergy to morphine, you know, you may use Dilaudid or oxycodone, or um, again, my favorite is methadone. So because it works on the nerve pain, which we often forget the nerve pain and also the bone pain. So many cancers now um, affect the bone, you know, it has spread to the bone and morphine doesn't do that much for bone pain or oxycodone, none of those. Okay. So anyway, I hope this has made some difference in your life. <laughs> and uh, if it has, and if you know somebody who might benefit from this, please like and share this video. It'd be awesome. And um, subscribe, of course. You know, I don't ever say that, and I'm, I'm going to have to start saying it, I guess. <laughs> um, and tomorrow, I am uh, I'm, I'm bringing uh, uh, Sharon Sananda on. And we're talking about um, astral body and out of body experiences. So uh, I hope you look forward to that and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye everybody.